when basophils degranulate, they release histamine, a vasodilator, which brings more blood flow to an injured area, and increases how permeable capillaries are to white blood cells and certain proteins, which can aid in the immune response. Heparin decreases the clotting of blood, which would limit the ability of white blood cells to migrate to an area. And there are a few other signaling molecules, such as leukotriene D4, interleukin-4, which are very important in mediating allergic reactions and increasing vascular permeability, and other substances as well. Like basophils, the granules of mast cells possess histamine, which will attract more immune cells to an injured area and increase the permeability of capillaries. They also contain heparin, which limits clotting immediately around an inflamed area, and a number of signaling molecules, which can attract additional immune cells to an injured area. Both basophils and mast cells are capable of forming extracellular traps. As the cells die, they expel their chromatin and create a net which can trap microbes and concentrate the products of their granules in the specific area. Basophils and eosinophils are both elevated by some of the same stimuli, such as parasitic infections and allergies. They can be found in the same tissues, such as those around a parasite infection. Basophils and mast cells possess receptors for the IgE antibody, which means this antibody can bind their cell membranes, and when it binds to an antigen, such as that which might accompany an ectoparasite like a tick, they would then degranulate and cause inflammation in the vicinity of the tick bite and then attract other immune cells. Unfortunately, IgE antibodies which react to certain allergens such as substances in peanuts or bee stings or seafood could also then bind to the cell membranes of basophils and mast cells. The degranulation which would follow exposure to these allergens would then result in an allergic reaction and possibly become as severe as anaphylactic shock. 